Welcome to a crafting stream where I forgot to put away my, uh, you know, my sewing machine last time. <laughs> oh, well. Which way does this go in? there. Yes. So yeah, I sort of remembered this just before I went live and I was just like, oh, I'm going to have to do it, aren't I? That's the wrong one. Oh. Also, thank you for the follow up, like that. Please stop squeaking. Thank you. I can't believe I forgot this from last week. But now, today I'm going to be making the hammer to go with this costume. Um, I haven't actually started yet or designed, so this is going to be interesting. Definitely gonna be one of those. I have no idea why I'm doing this. No, that's all of them. making the dress and um okay let's mute that <laughs> right I finished making the dress painted the cat ears but they need to be brushed because you know uh, freshly painted fur looks hard I mean you can see it's all matted and pretty nasty so I'm going to have to give that a brush just to bring it up to that, which is a lot less matted and nicer. Just don't worry about it wrecking my uh, hairbrush. I mean, should have got a different one, probably, but, you know. I didn't really paint these properly, but they do look a lot better with, uh, you know, all the little white patches and stuff like that. So I'm quite happy with how they've turned out. Get it all before we uh, 
actually attach them to anything. Pretty good. I just shaped them a bit because I didn't. I've got to say, this aluminium wire is really easy to flex. Because they'll probably need some little bits of cutting at the end, but then I just have to decide where to put them on the headband. I know the pink's a little bright, but okay, so that immediately goes forwards and forward. I know, I'm going to have to cut that hair back a little bit more, but... <laughs> yeah, come on. Let go through. Straighten that up and push through. I'm surprised that this is basically hot glue down on the inside. I probably shouldn't be, but... to go under that there. Come on, under. Come on. Yeah, yeah. And to be fair, if it was hot glued on before, I can do it again. folded over on the inside. So we've got one here. I know that is way too much fur, but so we fold you forwards directly like that. And about there. Start. Pop that off. And bend around. Come on, free go. Hmm? He likes to put up a fight, but I wasn't expecting that. And yeah, don't forget to hide the end of the wire because you don't want that sticking in your head. that little bit off and underneath come on okay and it's through I mean it's fine but the size of that point coming out the back
Okay, and that's just drinking because I'm pretty dry. <laughs> also my paint. Ill-advised to drink, but it is very brightly coloured. never end hidden in the back. I mean you can see they're a mess but it doesn't matter because nobody sees that. <coughs> also again it, they're based off this one but this type of headband is really uncomfortable and slippy. I would have, it was planned that they'd be finished now, but yeah, that ear is way, way too much food. This one here is a bit too much as well, so let's cut that back just a little. about cutting hair you don't ever cut straight across always do an angle and cut because reasons <laughs> okay if you just cut in a straight line it shows up as being a very obvious cut if If you uh, cut at an angle, it makes it look less uh, straight line or natural. Quite sure hairdressers would have a name for it, but um, to make the ears, I use. Fake sheepskin rug from Ikea. There's a lot of cutting back on this material, but it's quite nice. It has some unpronounced, well, almost unpronounced. To be fair, yeah. No, I uh, got this stuff years ago to do a Squall cosplay and I have very little sense when it comes to the amount of material I'll use, so I got far too much. So this many years on, I just make cat ears because I can. But now, uh, basically use the mats, cut out triangles with them. The center of it is EVA foam. This stuff is just aluminium wire, which I got from Hobbycraft. It's just bendable and makes them poseable. And a random cheap hair, uh, hair band from Tesco. Oop, that thing. After that, I just hot glued it together because I'm lazy and could not be bothered to sew it. So, 
No, they're pretty much done. Come on, one more. Okay, close enough, just don't fall off. So pretty much the last part of this project, I have to make myself a hammer. Now, for people who've been here for a while, I did this years ago and made a, well, I made a Harley Quinn hammer years ago just because people were turning up with giant boxes strapped to like posts and not being allowed in conventions. So I made an easy to make one. This one I'm going with the same thing, but smaller and more sensible. So first up, uh, where's my plastic conduit? So first up, getting a bit of plastic pipe. This stuff here um, has previously been used on a project. It was a barrel for a Gatling gun. I'm going to be using it for a hammer now, but I'm not worried about the silver paint because, well, it's getting painted silver. <laughs> So first off, I just need a measurement. I'm basically it just needs to be able to go from one shoulder to the other, and I'm just gonna get a measuring tape and measure that. Oh wow, that's too long. Oh, there, yeah. So I need it to be about sixty centimeters. The last one of these did, I did, I used the full two meters. It was ridiculous. Wow, I'm glad that worked. <laughs> I'm just going to use the 60 centimeters and just measure around. Now I'm doing a few of these markings just to make sure that I've got, or just make sure I'll always have a marking when I'm going to be cutting. And the question is, do I have a reasonable saw or I'm going to have to go get the silly one? Okay, big industrial one it is. I love that saw. going to be cutting this as you saw me mark the line there. I'm going to need to hang it off the edge of the table so um, sorry about the visibility on this bit. Come on. Yeah, a lot of people don't match or have never actually been told how to use a saw. So, uh, yeah, might as well cover that. Okay, so essentially saw blades are self-clearing and um, basically they clear on the backstroke and also they've got ribs in it for that, but... So you cut forward, much as you... I think you cut forwards. I mean, I barely know how to work one, but essentially, don't always push down too hard on the saw, it just fills up the teeth and breaks it. So it's like, yeah, push hard, cut, yep, yeah, push, cut, push, clear, push, clear, and... Ah. 
And of course, God's with side's going to be falling away from you because that falls away. And otherwise, if it falls towards the centre, it locks your blade. Um, yeah, locking your saw blade is not good. Now, of course, that's a mess, so I'm just going to uh, file it off. Now, this pipe is discarded uh, electrical conduit. Basically, the place where I got it just went like, we don't want it anymore, can you get rid of it? And I'm just like, yeah, sure, I'll have it. So now we need a reasonable size for the hammer head, which basically to build a cylinder. And then we've got two compression bits to either side in the design. So I'm just going to build a cylinder that's It's about 20 centimetres, I think. No. Yeah, about 15, I think, in the end. It's about 15 centimetres in diameter, just times by three, so it's 45 around. Again, it's 3.14 for the diameter to the circumference, but. Um, it, it's easier to do free, so that's what I'm doing. And of course, um, okay, sorry, it's much easier to imagine this if I do it for you, so. Let's make it 15 seconds long. This prototyping paper is amazing and I can't believe it took me like a year or two to work out to you So it's 15 high, just about right there and here because it's close enough. down to there because that feels about right. Okay, so that's 32 long, so it's 32 by 45, which is fortunately almost the dimensions of this measuring stick, so. Next up, I'm going to be making it out of EVA foam, so turn on the glue gun so it'll actually work. Now the question is, do I have 45 in scraps? So I vastly prefer to waste some scraps over using some new stuff. I don't think I have that big. Yeah, okay. Prototype stuff in there. So this is why I yell at myself to tidy up, because I don't, and I end up with 
bit like this place unusable. Yeah. Now, yeah, these things come in huge mats, so I always end up with a lot of it. So, 32 high there, 32 high here. A straight line to start with. And put a thirty two here as well. So, how are you all doing today? A knife, that is good enough. I'll find out why I smashed in a minute. Ooh, that blade's blunt. all the way through. <coughs> okay, I'm apparently just sneezing today. Last up, I need to put a hole in it. Now, measure before we do something dumb. It's about 16, we put a line through. And then the weights. What the heck? going on with that lighting. Okay, and a good way of cutting EVA film. If you can keep it going in a straight line, which I did not. And yeah, if you need to cut circles, we have VA foam, a pipe, or a pipe, bit. the plastic pipe melts, but a bit of pipe, and uh, you just make perfect holes every time. Okay, I'm going to go get some tissue, because that's getting out of hand. I'll be there in a second.
Well, that, yeah, that was needed doing. So I'm going to try out a new technique on this one. I saw this suggested the other day for doing uh, joins in circles, and I've yet to try it. So I'm hoping for good luck with it. <laughs> so instead of just uh, butting the joints up to each other, you cut them at an angle and then they've got better grip. I mean, from a physics standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. I imagine that it's not intended to be done with a pair of scissors, but... And then, of course, remember you're dealing with me, so... Of course I'm going to do it with scissors. So that way there we now have two angled surfaces that can meet up, and it increases the amount of work... surface area for them to touch. <laughs> Now, of course, as always with this, we um, tape it together on one side. Uh, that just helps you get the seam together better. So, butt up one end to the other. Usually I do the seam on the out or the tape on the outside, but I don't really want to work in that space for hot glue gun. Now the usual safety warnings, hot glue is hot. It's in the name. It's bad for you. My hot glue gun is not very great and does not get up to high temperatures often. So I do have a really bad habit of touching the hot glue. Don't do it. squeeze them together. You know I said don't do that? I am serious, don't do that. My hot glue gun does not get as hot as most and I have been burnt doing this with someone else's glue gun because I forgot. It's not pleasant or good for you. I'll just pop that out of the way. And inside we're going to need some reinforcement on it because... Well, I mean, just look at that. <laughs> I mean, that's not going to be a very good... Sorry. That's not going to be a very good hammer. It's not going to look good. So I'm going to put a ring here inside and one on the top that they, it fits into using this stick as the reinforcement to hold it in shape. So this means I have to get a larger circle, which is easy. What you do is just get a larger pipe. This is a larger pipe. <coughs> okay, so we'll use the bigger stuff. Now, 
basically my cosplays usually have a lot of rivets in them so I have a lot of bits just laying around with tons of holes punched in them so yeah if you have problems with loads of holes punched into surfaces uh, you may want to look away for a bit To be fair, I have an issue with holes with large surfaces, uh, surfaces with large holes, large numbers of holes punched in it, making this the most unpleasant part of the build. Okay, can we let that end cool down so we're not actually melting anything? Sort of ring, it's not great, but it'll do. Let's pick another spot that I have wrecked previously. Okay, so we've got a bit of a cut going to start and then come in with the small one. And got a hole. And finish off the big one. So neither of them are perfect, but basically they just need us a bigger attachment surface, so they'll work. Oh, well, that's one of the worst I've ever done. side of it and I'm going to put that up to the top of the pipe like that you can see inside. Now you may have noticed the problem with what I've done and I've now blocked off the second one from going in. Fortunately it was bad enough I could tear it open. Saw that, that I had to fudge that back together, it's fine. So to slip that up to the surface. Now up we go. Okay, and we've got a head and center. Now I've got to use the hot glue gun in there just to finish this but it's just not as bad as doing the seam in a small area. Slide the ring down into the center. I'm actually showing what I'm doing is difficult here. I did not think that would be so bad. But. Okay, and there we now have. Yeah, it's about the right size. It's the handle's a little shorter than I expected, but. 
All right, it'll be fine. Now I have to cut a end section just to like seal that off because otherwise it's see-through and we don't want that. Okay, well, I imagine some people would want that, but I don't. This is some of the oldest material that I own. Uh, I'm trying to work my way through it, but back when I started, they didn't do uh, foam mats in a roll like that that you could just use for this stuff. So I had to use actual floor tiles. <laughs> it's been a while. in the wrong spot. I can just draw around it like that. I've got one end. One and... Oh, come on, at least make a proper circle. There are probably better ways to do that. <laughs> then of course I've just got to cut slightly on the inside to account for the fact that I cut on the outside. So yeah, when I'm just making stuff for fun, I am far less precise than when I'm doing it properly. So it's like, I'm just doing this for a laugh. Why does it matter if I end up... Just to note, for people who haven't been here from the start, this one is a warm-up project just to get me back in you know, the uh, swing of things for proper crafting. So this never really going to see a convention. I'm just enjoying it. Oops, that's one. As long as the outside's relatively flat, we'll be okay. Now, of course, it does take quite a bit of cutting to get into this stuff, because this foam... Yeah. I'm remembering how bad this stuff was when I started. It's like taking a shot at it, I think this is about CF80. 80, 85, but again, they weren't thinking densities to make it light for costuming. They were thinking, oh, let's make a floor mat. get the last bit out of my inventory because it's been a long time. And then 
make a little bit much of this. Okay, I end up with slightly wonky hammer. Same goes, just mark it up. Where it's not the right size, just and I know I'm guessing a lot, but and how to deal with screw-ups. This is going to be a good one. Because again, I'm not planning anything properly or doing anything properly, so. Okay, if you're going to hide a bit of mess like that, you hide it properly. So I've got a little fold here. I can cut that back and seam it. And it'll look a little odd, but... Compared to uh, you know, doing it wrong entirely, this is a much better way of doing it. No, I've made a drum. Okay, this could become a problem. Okay, and just chuck that on the floor. Same as most of it. If it wasn't in a workshop, I would drive the owner mad. And again, too big, but but to cut a little bit off the outside. It'll probably become too small. <laughs> Okay, and no longer soon, but we don't worry about that. That's such a good fit. So just glue it. Also, when crafting, your mistakes and mess ups are actually really important. If you just do something and it goes right every time, I mean, you'll learn that one technique, but you'll never learn how to deal with, you know, things going wrong. Because things will go wrong eventually, and your ability to deal with that is really important. And if you've spent years learning how to deal with stuff going wrong, you know, either mistake, helping other people, or just not bothering to do it properly. You'll know how to build your things better next time. I mean, that little bit there I'm about to have to deal with, but... I mean, it's that. V into it. And 
what you end up with. Um, it's a little bit off center, but you know. That, that guy is actually just off center. I made the line there for a reason. Mostly because this section is the bit people don't see. And another important trick. If you're going to make mistakes, I get the bit that people can't see. Remove cosplays. It's going to end up being photographed. And when you do that, or when they take photos, just go, right, so half this is going to be hidden behind me. There you are, that bit's behind me. And you can't see anything. absolute genius. Just hide it, make sure people don't see it in the photo, and then you're the only person who knows that it's there. Unless you made it live in front of an audience, at which point they all know it's there. But, last up, I mean, that is basically a hammer. But, the joke with this hammer is... I mean, the character in question is a video and um, banning people is not the most effective because there's loads of ways around it. So this is the ban hammer and it's a squeaky mallet because, you know, if someone's really determined, they'll just walk past it. So what I need to do is have, uh, basically from there and there-ish, there's going to be corrugations where it can bend in to squeak. Now, I'm not actually doing the full corrugations because that takes ages, but I'm going to cut bands and put them on top so it looks like it. And of course, again, structure and that type of thing is really difficult. So what I need is 40 odd centimetre uh, bits, which that is not long enough for, but that's fine. I mean, I have tons of scrap for a reason. Also, we are coming up on an hour, so drink, people. You can't see it, but my bottle is empty. Let's put that somewhere I'm not going to knock it over. Wreck the place, as I usually do. I mean, at this point, the heater could go off because. Um. Okay, that was a lot of sparking. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm fine. I know how the. Uh... It's because the heater was actually running when I turned it off, and. Yeah, for drawing full count for a switch while you turn it off, it will arc. So I have to find somewhere on here where I can get about 40 odd centimetre, 40, 50 centimetres, which, um, I mean, yeah, I wonder when I'm going to be able to cut that out. Not where I thought, because that is only 46 centimetres. So where is my tape? Here's my measuring tape. Get some chalk. Also to mark foam, I have always used chalk. So it's 50. So about there and 
high are these going to be? About three centimetres high, so they need to be about four wide at an angle. As you can see, I am entirely guessing at this point. That's sort of how I've always worked though, I just make it up as I go along and hope for the best. So I need two per thing and I think we make it two corrugations and then add a third, which means that we need eight of these. So it's four. Eight. So that's four. Oh wow, it just needs to be 32 high again. <laughs> so we're at 24. 24, 20, 16, 12, 8, yep. Yeah, just put you up to there. I know this isn't quite that way, but... We just finish the cuts a little bit further because, you know. At some point I did produce a sphere, hence all of these sphere bits. Okay, so we got that. Got to finish off this line. So there you go. Then four zero. Zero four. And 
And one more. Okay, and a little slice of the And up. Okay, so that's two to either side. We may do more later, but I will do that as when we get them. 